Good evening, everybody. I want to say, first of all, before I say anything else, that there's lots, there are two other major national, less important political conventions happening. Um, and so many of the people there are getting paid to be there. I, I want to ask, first of all, how many of you here are lobbyists? <laughs> yes, we're all lobbyists in our own way. But my point is, is that um, I suspect very few of us in the room are being paid to be here. And um, what I want to do is thank you all from co for coming from wherever you've come from because you care about our country and our planet and our world and our people. So before I say anything at all, um, because I'm new amongst you, um, let me lead you in a round of applause for yourselves. I'm best known for uh, a film and a book that I wrote called No Impact Man. I, um, thank you. well thank you. I came, I came up with the concept back in, two, I'm a, I'm a, I was a history writer. I came up with the concept back, back in 2006 because, because of the war, which was clearly about oil, and because in January, the NYU, NYU students near my home were walking around in shorts and t-shirts, and it was very clear to me that we had climate change. So on the one hand, we were at war for oil, on the other hand, we're destroying our planet's ability to support us as a species when we burn this oil. And in between, we have a way of life which I don't think is as happy for the people of the world as it could be. Um, and so I came up with this concept of No Impact Man, which was a year I spent with my family living as environmentally as possible in many ways as a communication strategy to attempt to attract wider political, or sorry, wider public attention to the um, problems that we have in the world and an attempt to get actually the entire, as much as I could, the public talking about our problems. One of the reasons I did it is because I felt the politicians in the United States weren't doing the jobs that they were elected to do. Thank you. That's the bad news. That's the, that's the bad news. We have tremendous problems, but I believe that the professional politicians are not doing the jobs of the professionals. And it's time for the so-called amateurs to occupy the politics in the United States. I'm running for the 8th Congressional District of New York State Central Brooklyn because I believe that the Repu both the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are in the pockets of the major corporations of this world. That no longer is either party able to represent the interests of the people who vote for them. And not only that, but that the people who vote for them or don't, who don't even turn up for the poll to the polls, realize that our democratic institutions their institutions are no longer representing them. And the opposite of what we need is happening in that people's disenchantment is disenfranchising them. Yeah. People are moving away from our democracy at exactly the time when we need them to be moving back in. Thank you. I'm running on the grounds that it's time to occupy politics with people instead of money. My belief is that politics abhors a vacuum and it will get filled with something if there's nothing there. And if this is not the entire answer to getting the corporations out of politics, but one way to help to get corporations out of politics is to get the people back in. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm running on the grounds that, that it's important to get as many volunteers as possible, to get as many people involved as possible. I'm running on the grounds that um, 
we, our entire economy based on fossil fuels, the consumption-based economy is no longer working, that we should be subsidizing not corporations, but communities. The fundamental unit, thank you, thank you. The fundamental unit of our society is the local community, not the corporation. A good, resilient, strong local community will support its youth, it will support its old people, and it will provide, through the growth of local business, jobs for people so they no longer have to move away from their communities but can stay in their communities so that our most talented and strongest people can be in the community supporting the people there. Yeah. People ask, if you go to Congress, what will you do? And of course that's an important question, but the truth is, in these times, that one person going to Congress can do almost nothing at all. And as a matter of fact, 435 people <laughs> going to Congress can do almost nothing at all. If I were to go to Congress, my job would, to be, would be not only in Washington, but that back in the district. My job would be to, to build coalitions between the different communities, to get them to work together. And let me say this, um, in one, so for example, instead of having the, the seven, eight, nine, ten different communities in my district all vying for their own charter school, hoping that their community can be the one that gets more resources than the other communities to have a decent school for their kids, my belief is that a politician should be back in their district bringing all the communities together to fight for a good public school system for everyone. And taking that as an example, it's my belief that a good politician is not there only to win, but to lead. And so a good poli if I go to Congress, what I would be doing is spending a lot of time in my district building, building coalitions within the district so that I can bring the people with me, so that I could show that I have the support while other Congress members might have the support um, of the corporations, that I have the support of my people, and then I would be at Congress working with other Congress people who feel similarly to me and building, corp building coalitions between different groups of people throughout the nation and bringing all of those people to Washington, D.C. I thank you all so much for welcoming me among you. Um, and, and I want you to know, I, I, when I became No Impact Man, I, I, and it turned out that my career was about showing up in t-shirts and jeans. That was the happiest day of my life. <laughs> I hope you can appreciate the great sacrifice I'm making by wearing this suit. Thank you so much.